for you. <laughs> She'll have to edit this. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi, this is Mary from Southern Pen Bookshop. We're here today with Allison Slaughter talking about her cookbook. Um, Allison, you want to tell us about your cookbook and how you got started? Sure. Um, my cookbook is called Mary Alice's Kitchen Desserts. It's um, the first book in a series of three. It's based on my grandmother, uh, whose name is Mary Alice, and our family's 100-year-old-plus uh, vintage traditional southern recipes. Mm -hmm. Everything is from scratch, except for my banana pudding recipe, which we do use sugar-free jello mix, but that's just because um, I like it and I think it tastes better than the traditional custard. Mm -hmm. And it's very versatile for people who are diabetic or even non-diabetic. Okay. Do you have a favorite recipe in the book? Uh, I like them all. <laughs> Let's give them but, an idea of um, some of them that are in there. My, I guess my number one favorite recipe in this book is our ice cream recipe. Our ice cream mm. recipe is over 200 years old. It's a family recipe from my grandfather's mother's family. They brought it over um, from Scotland and the Isles. And uh, basically you can tell it's really old school because it's, let's see if I can find it in here. Mm. I see the rum ball recipe in there. That's a favorite yeah. of mine. Really? See, I'm not a huge... I'm... There it is. Basically, the ice cream recipe is a gallon of whole milk, five tablespoons of vanilla extract, three eggs well stirred, two cans of sweetened condensed milk, three cups of sugar, and then if you want it vanilla or you can do it three pureed... I mean, you can do um, any pureed fruit of your choice, which we like to do um, peach or strawberry and then my dad likes black walnut but mm. i don't really do black walnut <laughs> do you need to do it any differently if you're going to put the walnuts in it no the you fruit? just put it you just put it like you would put your puree just chop it up in the food processor until it's a little bit of a sand not really a sandy consistency you still mm. want it to be like little tiny chunks mm -hmm. but um you just put it in mix it in and keep stirring it so the eggs and everything doesn't Curdle sit at the bottom, so you want to keep. Once you put the lid on, you want to keep twisting it until you put it in the ice cream maker. Okay. And it makes about a about three quarts of ice cream. Oh, that sounds awesome. Did you start cooking as a child? Yes. Um, I'm the only child to mm -hmm. older parents, and so um, I was lucky enough to have my grandparents still alive. They were born in 1927. Oh, That's wow. my mom's uh, mother and father. Mm -hmm. And when my mom would go to work. Uh, she would just drop me off at my grandparents and I would just spend all day with them every day during the summer after school before school and my grandfather my sorry my grandmother made everything from scratch she did she literally cooked until the day she died at 83 mm. breakfast lunch and dinner oh wow full meals from scratch and I was her sous chef and she would let me pretty much do anything in the kitchen unless it was canning season. <laughs> I was not allowed to touch the jars and I was not allowed to pour the stuff in, but I could wash them and I could help her prep the stuff to go in the canning jars. Awesome. And let's see what else. Um, yeah, like I just learned how to do everything. My mom doesn't really like to cook too much. Um, she knows how to cook, but she doesn't really like it that much. Um, and so I just sort of took over as soon as I got old enough to learn how to cook and bake. I just took over and I enjoy it. It's very uh, therapeutic to me. And I love just reading over recipes of my grandmother when she was alive and, you know, experimenting and coming up with all kinds of new recipes and baked goods. And it's just fun. And these recipes are some that you would cook with your grandmother? Yeah, all these recipes in my cookbooks. Are all my family's recipes that are a ho that are over a hundred years old? Oh, wow. They're all handwritten. They're in a cedar box at my house. Mm -hmm. and they were passed down to me. Um, one of the oldest recipes I have is one of my um, 
third great grandmother's wedding cake recipe from 1830. Oh, wow. And so all these are my family's vintage recipes. They've all been tested. They've all been tried. Um, 100% of these recipes and this first cookbook, um, we make these every year, every holiday. There's not one that we don't use. And pretty much the, the biggest ones we use out of the cookbook is the banana pudding with meringue. That's my dad's favorite. The carrot cake, my mother's favorite. The no bake um, chocolate oatmeal cookies. That's, that's a family, our family, family favorite. <laughs> um, the banana bread. I can't keep that. I can't keep that in the house. I'll make it. It's gone by the next morning. Well, I have to tell you one thing I really liked about your cookbook was that they are really traditional southern type recipes mm -hmm. um things that that i remember eating growing up and that i have also you know mm -hmm. baked a lot uh during time uh it's nice to see those types of recipes being preserved and passed on to mm -hmm. another generation yeah so and yeah. i haven't had i haven't been able to have any kids and i'm a proud golden retriever dog mom <laughs> and if you notice in the back of my book um like every proper southern household <laughs> there is a section for desserts for your fur babies <laughs> so if you are a dog mom like me or a dog lover this is for you dogs are family they are a lifetime commitment and you can't leave them out True. And um, basically, as far as all the um, recipes in my cookbook, um, I'm almost 32. I haven't had any kids, and I've seen so many people over the past few years, you know, ask me, how do I make this? How do I do this? You know, even people my mother's age, who she's 66, you know, they forgot how to make it. They don't know how to make it. And I see so many people making stuff out of a box, doing stuff like that. And I've asked people, I said, you don't see the Italians, you don't see the Spanish, you don't see other um, groups of people forgetting how to cook their food from scratch. Mm. And I said, there's no reason that, you know, especially here in Georgia, that we should forget how to make our food because Georgian food especially is more than you know fried chicken and macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. and you know it's it's so much more than that everything is um you know it's traditional food mm -hmm. you know people think southern food is extremely unhealthy it's not true mm -hmm. southern food um you have beans you have squash you have your vegetables you have any type of vegetable you can think of you have your corn your sweet potatoes everything like that At my house we would eat vegetarian meals mm -hmm. uh about well they weren't truly vegetarian meals because we did use we did use you know smoked meat to season it mm -hmm. but truly like meatless basically meatless meals that consisted of nothing but vegetables and then fruit from the garden or vegetables from the garden some cornbread maybe uh, yeah, every now and then, um, about five to six times a week. And then maybe one or two times a week, we would have like a roast or, um, steak. We didn't really do pork chops that much. Um, a lot of my, a lot of people in my family had heart issues, so we didn't really do pork chop too much, but we did do crackling cornbreads. We did do biscuits every morning. We would eat, um, lunch or dinner. We, if we had any biscuits left over, we would cut them up, put a little butter on them, put them in the oven, mm -hmm. and then have that. Um, just everything in the Southern household is focused around fresh ingredients, farm to table. Um, you know, it's really depending on how you cook it. You see everyone talking about um, how much butter, or how much lard, how much everything like this is. That's highly over exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Highly agree. over exaggerated. Um, all the recipes I know of, unless you're baking, puts very minute amount of lard or stuff like that. Frying is maybe 
maybe 15% of Southern cuisine. Mm -hmm. Most Southern foods aren't fried. True. Baked, grilled, roasted, slow cooked in the oven, slow cooked it on the stove. Mm -hmm. um, most items that I know of are just slow roasted on the grill or open fire barbecue pit. Um, as far as meats go, mm -hmm. vegetables, you can, vegetables are stewed all day. True. And as far as desserts, um, all my desserts in my cookbook um, are easily converted into sugar-free recipes. All my family um, pretty much are diabetic genetically they're just predisposed to diabetes mm -hmm. and um so you can cook um the recipes here if you get the baking splenda and the baking section of your grocery store you can substitute the sugar for the correct amount on splenda mm -hmm. and you can find the sugar to splenda ratio on um, the back of the splenda bag all right, sounds good. You mentioned that this is the first of three right. cookbooks. What um, other cookbooks do you have coming out? Um, the second cookbook that should be released in probably mid-November, early December, is going to be called Everyday Southern Essentials. And basically, it's going to be everything from your beans to your breads to um, your vegetables to your meats. Basically, everything you need to know on how to cook breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, appetizers, what you need to do for a holiday party, and it's gonna cover everything. And then the third cookbook in the series, I've had a lot of people request, um, hey, I'm a, I'm a mom, I work a full-time job, I'm busy, or I'm a single person and I work a full-time job, I don't have time to cook. So the third cookbook is basically how to get a from scratch meal, a healthy meal, from your fridge to your table, your pantry to your table, within 30 to 45 minutes. And it'll have a lot of um, quick recipes. It'll have um, slow cooker recipes. I do not like to use a lot of um, prepackaged yeah. items in my food. I pride myself on being from scratch, farm to table. Um, I cook just like the way that my second great grandmother would cook. I'm using their recipes. Um, you can cook in a slow cooker and you can use canned vegetables, canned stuff like that. That's fine. Or you can use frozen vegetables and stuff like that. And then that way you can just, um, if you do use canned vegetables, just um, you can dump them out in a strainer mm -hmm. and then you can rinse all of the, um, the salt and you know, a little bit of sliminess or whatever that's on the canned goods and it's like fresh. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's just gonna be a super quick, easy to do, um, you know, cookbook. Well, sounds good. Well, I appreciate you joining us today for the interview. And we look forward to the other cookbooks. And remember, you can come get this cookbook, Mary Alice's Kitchen, Kitchen Desserts. Desserts at the Southern Penn Bookshop, located inside the Mon Monroe, <laughs> I can't Mercantile. even say it, Mercantile, at 113 Broad Street in Monroe, Georgia. Thank you. Yeah. We'll have to